Hey guys, uh, I'm going to apologize in advance if I seem as noticeably tired as I actually am. Uh, I worked both my jobs today and uh, had started night school as well, so uh, today has metaphorically kicked my ass and I'm exhausted, but YouTubers got a YouTube man, so uh, we're going to talk about probably my favorite film of the DCEU, Wonder Woman. Um, so, just as a throw out there, um, while it's not the highest grossing film of the DCEU yet, um, it does have the highest, um, Rotten Tomatoes score. So, it's directed by Patty Jenkins from 2017, an action war film. Starring Gal Gadot, or Gal Gadot, depending on who you ask, as Diana Prince slash Wonder Woman, Chris Pine as Steve Trevor, Robin Wright as, uh, now these Amazonian names are kind of difficult. Um, this one is pronounced antiope, kind of like antelope, only with out the L. Um, uh, Connie Nielsen plays Hippolyta, which is kind of an easier one for some reason to me. It's like taking the the word hippo and adding Lydia at the end. I don't know. Don't. Like I said, I'm exhausted, so if I say weird shit, my bad. Ellen I Anaya as Dr. Maru or Dr. Poison. I prefer Dr. Poison. David Lewis, who played uh, Professor Lupin in the Harry Potter series as Sir Patrick Morgan. Lucy Davis as Ida Candy. Danny Houston as Eric Ludendorff, Ewan Brem Bremner as Charlie, Saeed, now this one might come out bad, Saeed Tajma'awi as Samir, and Eugene Brave Rock as Chief. So it has a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I believe, if I'm correct, I don't need that open anymore. If I am correct, that is the highest just want to check Shazam. I remember Aquaman being sort of lower. Shazam was on the higher side. Yeah, so Shazam has a 90%. Uh, this is a 93%. So that is the highest of all of the DCEU films so far. Um, and I think that's actually really earned. This is a well-made movie that I don't have too much to complain about. And off of a budget of about $150 million, the film made $821.8 million at the box office. So it's not the highest grossing film, but it is higher up there. So it is a period piece taking place during World War I. The film kicks off with Steve Trevor crash landing on Themyscira, which surprisingly rolls off the tongue when you think about it, which then brings the human war to the Amazonians. This starts the first of actually a lot of badass sequences of fighting. Um, there's a lot of slow motion action shots. Uh, there's a couple where they're shooting arrows, a couple where they're throwing swords and knives. Um, just so cool. The whole opening sequence kind of sets this up. So the opening sequence is how Diana just kind of grew up in Themyscira. So the whole opening sequence, which is like 20 minutes kind of sets this all up and shows that the Amazonians are not people you mess with. Um, as I said, the we watch the Amazonians completely destroy the humans using swords, spears, knives, whatever they can get their hands on. Don't touch my food, cat. Um, the humans, they, they're using guns and they land a few hits, they kill a couple, but the small brigade of humans gets wiped out by these Amazonians. Then there's the action scene at No Man's Land. So this is a little further into the film um, where um, uh, <clears throat> Wonder Woman start to kind of, starts to kind of show off who she is to Steve Trevor and his crew. Um, there's a lot of scenes where slow motion gunfire and she lifts, lifts her uh, bulletproof bracelets up and knocks the bullet out. I, I thoroughly enjoy those scenes. That's why I like this movie. It's a great action movie. It's a great superhero movie. Um, and it's really paved the way for female-led superhero films. 
Now, I am not in any way, uh, how do you say, <laughs> qualified would be the word I'd use. I am in no way qualified to discuss uh, how females have been treated in the superhero universe, but I can say Wonder Woman has, if there's one thing you can say DC did well, it was pave the way for more female-led super, uh, female -led superhero films. Uh, your Captain Marvels, which I've got right here if it'll come out of the shelf you get your captain marvels you're gonna get your black widows in a few months um yeah in the past you've had catwoman electra but think about the fact that those are not good movies what i and again i'm not qualified to discuss this i'm a male youtuber i'm not a female youtuber but in my mind and actually quite a few people's minds this movie was made mostly by women, casting mostly women. It's shot differently um, than... A good example that I'll use is Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, a couple of them, I can't remember off the top of my head which ones. A lot of the Friday the 13th films, you'll find that their directors have a lot of porn directing background gross and that's why those movies are shot the way they are they're shot to the male gaze i guess you could say not male gaze g-a-y-s it's g-a-z-e meanwhile wonder woman is shot to make women look badass and that's why i like this movie it's different we need different again not qualified to really discuss too much into it but I will say we need different, and this is paving the way for that to happen. It paved the way for Marvel to create Captain Marvel. It paved the way for Captain Mar for Captain Marvel to be one of the more powerful superheroes in the MCU, which is a now has paved its way for Black Widow to finally get her own movie. So this, we have a lot to thank Wonder Woman for. That's why it's probably the best of the DCEU, and maybe... I can say that the way things are going now for the DC, this is a game changer for that cinematic universe. The way things that are starting ahead, I think from this movie, yes, it, it, it it's followed by Justice League, which is not a great movie, which we are getting the Snyder Cut for in 2021 on HBO. I don't have HBO though, so I mean, that kind of blows, but maybe I'll have to get it now so I can watch that. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's followed by Justice League, but then it's Justice League is followed by Aquaman, which is followed by Shazam, which is followed by Birds of Prey. Do you see what I'm getting at? Is that these movies are starting to be get better. So hopefully with the next DC film, which I want to say is like Aquaman 2 or Shazam 2. Um, look it up again. Upcoming DCEU movies 2020 i'm not going to include any animated stuff okay so actually we've got the sequel which i forgot about somehow which is wonder woman 84 which is coming out on august 14th this year hopefully we're in theaters by then i'm actually excited to see that because I, I saw this one in theaters uh, and i, I want to go see that one and then that's going to be followed by the suicide squad on august 6th which i think was the same release date as the first one whatever um so i'm i'm kind of excited for some of those i don't know how i feel about the suicide squad but it is what it is at this point all right so where was i so the whole no man's land completely changes the tide of the war um so in that scene it's it's when we start to see how badass wonder woman can be and yeah it changes history and if you follow inst my instagram i've bitched about how movies change the t change history uh specifically the transformers franchise that does it off screen this we see which makes it it's like okay we know this is its own cinematic universe it's been set up that way it, it's different than the transformers films where it doesn't feel like they did all the puzzle work 
Wonder Woman was set up in Batman v Superman. It was it was set up to say, hey, there was this woman back in 1914, 1918, whenever this takes place. I think it's like 1917, 1918. She completely changed the world so that we could win. It's set up that way. Transformers films don't really take the time to do that. What do I have to complain about this movie? Well, eh, that last battle. Um, it loses me. There is a giant CGI monster, sort of, um, where Ares is exposed. Um, but it looks, it, it's meant to look like armor, and I think they accomplish that a little bit. Um, it, it sort of looks believable. What loses me is that the action is slightly boring. It feels like she just kind of happens to beat him. Um, but the whole, it feels like they blew their budget. And with all the slow motion fights throughout. And it's this movie is paced really well. But that whole action at the end feels rushed. And then you've got the issue of the, the villain, which I'm going to come to in a second. Um, the acting, though, is actually really good. Gal Gadot, or Gal Gadot, I, I say it both ways now, apparently. Uh, Chris Pine, David Thewis, Danny Houston, they all give really excellent performances. But <laughs> my favorite character in this is Ida Candy. She's so funny. She's a delight every time she's on screen. Um... She has some sweet moments with Diana and Steve. I just really loved her. Um, I don't know why. She kind of reminds me of a uh, less in-your-face Melissa McCarthy. So, and I'm not a huge Melissa McCarthy fan, but I sort of enjoy her. It depends on the day, really. So, I can say that this kind of laid-back version of Melissa McCarthy, which it's not actually her. I just, it's what I imagine. Um, also, the girl from fantastic beasts i can't remember her name but i'm also getting uh reminders of her too i don't so i've mentioned that i mentioned this so now let's talk about it i don't care for the villain um i don't care for the reveal i i have to say that up until the final battle we are led to believe that ludendorff and dr poison are the main baddie uh, slash Ares in disguise. I would have really preferred that. Um, I thought he was an excellent villain. I thought he was portrayed well. I thought that he was kind of pushed forward very well. But then we find out that it's Sir Patrick Morgan. So, spoiler alert, obviously, but you knew that going into this. And plus, the film is, you know, three years old at this point. Who cares? Um, it didn't feel like they built up to it at all, and the whole he's trying to force an armistice, it's like, that's not what the God of War does. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't care for it. Um, while I think Patrick Lewis, who plays, um, or I just said Patrick Lewis, I just mixed their names, David Lewis, um, it's spelled T-H-E-W-L-I-S, so... If it sounds like I'm trying to say Lewis but have a, a speech impediment, I don't. And I'm not trying to make fun of people who do. I'm just saying that's just how it's pronounced. Um, so David Lewis does a really good performance, as he always does. But the fact that they made him a villain out of nowhere, I just doesn't sit right with me at all. Um, and I, I don't think I'm the only one who feels that way. I know... There are quite a few other people. When I when I first saw this, I watched a lot of reviews for it, as I normally do when I see a movie. Now, though, I think if I see a movie, I'm going to do my own take on it and then watch other people's takes and just see how we compare and see what we liked about it, see what maybe we liked the same things. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, I'll probably just give my own thoughts on it at this point and then watch people's reviews. Um, which is something I want to quickly go off on a little tangent about. Some I've I've watched a few videos on suggestions for upcoming for you know new YouTubers and new movie reviewers. 
one guy said never watch anybody else's opinions before you posting your own thoughts you don't want to, your ideas to be swayed another guy said watch them maybe they picked up on something you missed um so i think that's kind of my my thought process is if it's a high strung movie like uh an mcu film a star wars film or even a dcu film give your own thoughts first don't if you enjoyed it don't let what you thought about the movie sway get swayed by what other people thought if it's something small like uh it's a good example here <laughs> okay here's a good example one i haven't seen if it's something small like jojo rabbit where yeah it's very popular apparently but not that many people really know about it then i think you're good to just watch someone else's video first and then give your thoughts on it so that's just my take so something i've been forgetting to really mention is the uh score for the films wow um a lot of these bad movies like justice league or batman v superman are scored by famous people like hans freaking zimmer um this one is composed by rupert Greg gregson williams no relation to john williams not very uh, not a very successful person i don't think hold on rupert He's a British composer. That's honestly why I thought he was related to John Williams. Let's see. He's done Abominable, Aquaman, Hacksaw Ridge, Wonder Woman, Catch-22. That's a Hulu show. Yo, this guy did Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the Were-Rabbit. That's awesome. He did Postman Pat the Movie and Battlefield 2. Okay, well... Some not very popular movies, or especially Legend of Tarzan. Um, but I think for this, he's really giving it his all. I really enjoy the Wonder Woman theme. I think it's probably the best of any of the superhero themes that are in these movies. Um, and yeah, like I said, without a doubt, this is probably the best score of the DCU. And it really kicked the studio down the path to making better movies. Um, just with the score alone, I think having a badass score backed by a badass hero, backed by just great direction by Patty Jenkins, that's why this movie succeeds. What follows di directly is Justice League, which is not that great. However, everything to come after kind of steps up the quality. I mean, Shazam is just a beautiful movie aquaman changed the dceu and birds of prey paved the way to have a in-universe rated r film i say in-universe just because joker it's kind of sketchy how joker fits in um so as i mentioned has the highest rotten tomato score of the whole dceu so i'm gonna give this a nine out of ten because as to be honest the ending was not what I wanted or what I hoped it to be. And no, I didn't make the movie, but if I'm not intrigued by your ending, I'm not. Uh, I do think this is the best of the DCU, and we'll get to... If I had to guess, I'd say Aquaman I'll probably rate like an 8 out of 10. Um, and Shazam will probably be another 9 out of 10. I don't think any of these DCU films are perfect. Um, I think they're working their way fingers crossed that batman is perfect um so tomorrow i'm gonna talk about justice league and it won't be late like this one it's like you know where's my watch it's nine o'clock right now um usually my videos are done at like 11 30 in the morning so i'm like way behind um i keep saying i'm a half hour behind because i, I actually am i i left my other job an hour after it well so my main job is a daycare supervisor obviously no daycares are open um but i had to go clean out my classroom at the school i work at so 
and get my application in for my summer job, which is cleaning the schools. Um, I really enjoy it. So yes, I'm a glorified janitor. Uh, it's actually kind of fun when you work with the right people, which I do. Um, so I got my application in for that, which took about an hour more than I wanted. Then I had to drive 40 minutes to go meet my mom at her job, which she hired me on for. And uh, it was there till about 3.30, which I wanted to leave at 3. And uh, went to mow my neighbor's lawn. Didn't do that. Uh, then I had to set up for school and found out my laptop does not exactly support Skype, which really blows. So I had to use an iPad and uh, uh, class was sort of fun-ish. <laughs> Um, obviously if you're still watching, you can probably just skip the rest of this, unless you want to find out some stuff I picked up. Normally I do it in groups of two, so I figured why not. So, um, really quickly, which I got to grab something else for it. One second. So I meant to put this in at the end of Joker. If I already did, I don't remember doing it. I'm sorry if you're seeing it twice. I picked up finally Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I also picked up The Invisible Man on digital, but obviously I can't show off digital yet. Um, I think if when Invisible Man comes out on Blu-ray, I'll probably get the DVD for it since I already have it on digital. Um, it's no sense in paying for a digital copy I'm not going to use, but I do want a physical copy of it. So, Sonic the Hedgehog, and it came with this little book, little comic book, that I was flipping through. I didn't read it yet. It's pretty much the whole movie in this little 8-bit format, which I really like. Um, just kind of shrunk down a little bit. And while I was at Walmart today working for a greeting card company, I was coming back from my break and I walked by their uh, little front display of DVDs and found Sleepaway Camp. I pre This was one of my earlier videos I covered during Bad Movie Week. Um, and I didn't have a physical copy of it yet. So as I was walking by, I like saw out of the corner of my eye, um, Felissa, um, uh, Rose. And I was like, not too many popular things she's in. And I looked over and my eyes widened. I was like, oh, that's sleepaway camp. So there was only one left and I was like, all right. I have got to make sure I grab it. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't take it right then and there and put it in like a cart and wait. They they don't allow vendors to do that kind of thing. So I was like, well, if it's there, great. If not, oh well. It was still there. Like I said, clearly not a very popular movie. I'm sure a lot of people were like, what the hell is this? And then put it back. Uh, so, obviously, uh, it's one of my more interestingly favorite horror movies. So I had to get it. I just couldn't resist. So I'm done talking. I'm going to eat and go the hell to bed. So until tomorrow when we talk about justice. Oh, one more thing. I finally, I was going to do videos for these today and then release them sporadically for the next two days. Um, but obviously that didn't happen. I finally finished my uh, top 10 list for um, Disney movies and top 10 things to watch on Disney Plus while in quarantine, even though we're pretty much over quarantine at this point so it doesn't even really have to be quarantine um on that disney plus list is movies that you wouldn't necessarily think of you're not going to see your lion kings or your marvel movies or your star wars um you're going to see things like there's a there's actually one disney channel original that i used to watch as a kid and then there's actually quite a few live action movies that i was like well what if i did a separate list for those and then there's um there's there's a few Disney animated movies that are less popular than others. So there's some stuff on there that everyone can enjoy. But as I said, I will do videos for them tomorrow. Um they won't probably won't get released tomorrow. They'll probably just kind of get released sporadically throughout the rest of the week and next week. And then I'll have a Pixar ranking at some point. Um I decided not to do a Toy Story ranking just because I, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I had the heart to do it, let's be honest. Even though uh, I felt that the last two were kind of pointless, it, it, they're still well-made movies. So I, I just can't bring myself to do it just yet. 
Um, anyway, as I've said like three times now, I'm going to go eat and go to bed. So until tomorrow with Justice League, I am Luke and I will see you guys later. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed what you just watched. If you're interested in more of my videos, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications every time I upload a video. And also, if you could, just leave a like down below and maybe even consider commenting and telling me things I did good, things I did bad.